Abdullah al Malki told his horrific tale of torture and abuse to a crowd at the Steelworkers Hall in Toronto. al Malki, a Canadian citizen, was detained in Syria in 2002, where he was tortured for more than a year. They started whipping the soles of my feet with an electric cable. Um, the pain was unbearable, so I... In 2008, the Yakabuchi inquiry found the RCMP had told Syrian authorities that al-Malki was a member of al-Qaeda, a false accusation. Actually, documents saying they concluding that there was no criminal offenses permitted. Then the inquiry also revealed that despite being warned that al-Malki was likely to be tortured in Syrian custody, the Canadian consulate did nothing to prevent it, and actually facilitated his interrogation. It is an astonishing story, says Esther Kern of Christian Peacemakers Teams, one of the sponsors of the My talk. My sense is that his story is very important to be told and to be heard by people from just our general population who may not have heard the stories before and may not even believe that this could actually happen. While the report from the Maharar inquiry made a number of recommendations to reform the Canadian intelligence services, the authorities will not say if they have been implemented something that worries Toronto human rights lawyer Hadat Nazami. I don't see in there much of uh, recognition of the responsibility of the Canadian authorities for the actions they've been uh, involved in. Almaki says it is difficult to tell his story, but he is motivated by his need to seek justice. I would like uh, first and foremost an apology. And I would like them as well to correct all that misinformation. I mean, I want them to send letters to every single country that they send that false accusations and say, well, we were wrong and, you know, these were false accusations. After two inquiries, there's ample evidence of the role the Canadian government played in al Malki's ordeal. Last month, the government refused to issue an apology, citing the ongoing civil lawsuit. But al Malki continues to hold out hope that his apology is forthcoming. Josh Kerr, TheDailyPlanet.com.